Welcome to the Film Junket Podcast. Guys, I'm a snake. Yes, that's right. And the reason why I'm saying that because I just got called a snake. <laughs> I'm also wearing a ball cap. Ah! No, I'm not. I'm not wearing a ball cap. Yeah, I just got called a snake right now on Twitter um, by somebody who follows me but um, has not unfollowed me. Anyways. What's happening, guys? Hey, the Film Junkie here. Welcome to the Film Junket Podcast. Um, yeah, appreciate you guys clicking in. Um, this is a first. Well, first off, I apologize. Because uh, uh, when it comes to um, recording the podcast weekly, which I've been doing a pretty good job at doing, and that was one of the things, one of my goals of 2019 was to do the podcast weekly. And, uh, of course, the vodka stream and everything like that. Um the goal was to do that, and uh, I usually record on Wednesday nights, and that didn't happen because I just got way too exhausted. Reality work has been kicking my ass, guys, a little bit. Things have been changing there and everything, and I got more responsibilities and this, that, and this. So, yeah, it just uh, I just hit a wall, you know, and I was trying to get stuff, other videos up and everything, and it just, you know, the clock just kept moving forward, and it was like, oh, God, you know. And then I was like, okay, I'll do it. Thursday night, last night, and then, of course, that's my movie night, and it would have happened, but the reason why it didn't... Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Here's a story. Um, it's not even really that big of a story, but it's just... It, it, let me just invite you into my life right now. Um, when it comes to movie night, Thursday nights, you know me, um, because, you know, I'm not, I'm not that popular and known enough. And I don't really, you know, I, I, I honestly need an assistant or a, something to just really fight these certain battles for me, pretty much, when it comes to uh, stuff, when it comes to posting, when it comes to a lot of things. I just get really lazy, you know, and it just, it sucks because I, I, I want to be as prolific as possible and do as much, get out as much content as possible and really get the brand going out there and everything like that, because that's why we do this. And what sucks is... The more popular you get, the more people think you're a big sellout and a piece of shit and a snake. That's exactly what happens. That's one of the things that I've noticed since, you know, my popularity popularity has grown, you know, that more people. And then, of course, when my I, I went from just being like always ranting and being that that fan, fan, fan all the time and just ranting like I like I used to do a lot. Now I kind of like hold back a little bit and, you know. I have like almost like a different kind of look on things because of the way 2018 went, you know, having somebody contact me that worked on J on Justice League and talking to various people that are have, you know, that are known in this community and stuff like that. You know, you kind of tweaks your, you know, the way that you look at things, your perspective, I guess you could say, you know, and I know a lot of people hate that. And I've lot, you know, I've had literally people just tell me that, hey, uh, you fucking suck now. I'm leaving. Bye. You know, I've literally had people just tell me that and then block me. And I'm just like, hey, do what you got to do. It's right there. You know, and I always tell people that, hey, if you don't want to want to see my tweets or want to hear me or nothing like that, mute me, block me. It's really that easy. It's the freedom of choice. That's what's so great about this world. Right. I mean, of course, that's not like that in, you know, in certain civilizations. But when it comes to the Twitter sphere, you have that option. You have that freedom. Freedom! But I think people just love it, you know? That's, you know, I think they people just love to um, hate on people, you know? I, I think it gets them off or something like that, you know, which just says a lot about their personal life. Anyways, um... So, you know, I've had a lot of that, but, um, so when it comes to, um, where was I going with this, you know, by the way, I'm not drinking anything right now. I should be drinking water because if I'm going to do a vodka string tonight, yeah, because it's, you know, I just got home from work. I'm not saying I didn't take a couple shots of vodka when I got home. 
because of this week, but I didn't want to start sipping now because, you know, I got the vodka stream later. Um, you know, so I didn't want to do that. I'm, I, so I literally have nothing drinking right now. Anyways, um, so um, when it came to last night, uh, yeah, let me, well, I don't even know where the fuck, see, this is what happens, guys, you're in my podcast, I go off on tangents, and then I forget where I am, I, I need, like, a crew here, I need, like, somebody here, and, you know, and it'd be awesome if eventually it would get to that point, where, you know, and I'm not talking about, you know, of course, I love having, you know, Mr. Chris Swenson, Wong Swenson on, and, uh, and I'm gonna have more people on, too, and, and I love that, but, you know, he lives in fucking, like, Hawaii, or, you know, people, people, people don't live... I want to actually have people here. Eventually, that'd be nice to have actually, you know, another person or two other people, you know, to to, ref- to bounce ideas and shit off. It'd be nice. But, um, uh, so then, like, you know, when I go off on a fucking tangent, they can be like, yeah, hey, where were they going with this? Oh, with this. Okay. Like I said, I need a publisher assistant because I just don't, I, I <laughs> yeah. But uh, but I think I, what I was talking about is like as you get more and more known, popular, I guess you could say, you know. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm just saying. I'm. It's not like trust me. I'm not where I'd love to be. That's for sure. Um, you just get you you just get looked at like that. You know, that's just the way it is. You become a sellout. You become this that because you're not. You're no longer like that. You're no longer um one of. I guess you could say like what they consider one of them. One of us. One of us. One of us. So I get a lot of that. I mean, I literally have had people do that, but it's just, it's just funny how it all works. And then they, you know, they make, say, they say shit like, yeah, man, you used to be like this and this like this. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, you kind of grow up a little bit, you know, um, I've been, you know, I've been, I've been doing this shit for a while, you know, uh, my first, I think my first video I reviewed Man of Steel. I, no, 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 no. I take that back. Uh, my first video, I talked about them casting the new Superman. And I said, yeah, it's Henry Cavill. That's right. Henry Cavill. When we all thought his name was Cavill and not Cavill. I remember that specifically. I think that was my first Film Junkie episode. It might be the second. I'm not sure. I might have to, uh, yeah, revisit that in a bit here. Um, Yeah, so... But I've been there since, especially when BBS was um, announced. I've been there, you know, just covering that, covering that, and then defending it and supporting it, and this, that, and this, and defending Justice League and Snyder and this, that, and this. And then when shit went down, now in 2017, sounds like it's two years ago, but it's not really, you know, all of a sudden you just kind of go, okay. When things come to life and everything like that. And then, you know, yes, you want to defend. You want to get information out there. But then you kind of like, okay, I, I probably should take a different perspective. And then, of course, you know, there's just people that aren't going to like it. And they're going to shit on you and call you out. Or attempt to call you out. It's just the normal shit. It's funny. You know. And, um, I mean, that was part of uh, one of the things that happened today. And I knew I was going to get help from it. Because uh, Daniel RPK, he, uh, he tweeted out a poll about, uh, would you want to see the Snyder Cut, or you want Warner Brothers to release the Snyder Cut? And I know a lot of you people, a lot of you guys, eh, maybe not a lot, but who knows, but probably a lot, but a lot of guys out there hate that guy, you know, he's a scooper, a scooper, which, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be, I don't want to be a scooper, at one time, at one point I did, and I think after I watched Nightcrawler, I kind of went, maybe I shouldn't, because, you know, I kind of compared it to that, like, I gotta be the first one out there, you know, scooper. Scooping is one thing. I mean, that I'm too lazy to be a scooper. I really am. I'm very much lazy, you know. And, you know, I respect those guys for doing what they do. Maybe not Scoopy Pants so much just because I don't like his attitude and he's just a fucking... He's just always been a prick, you know, when it comes to uh, stuff like that. You know, but you got others out there that, yeah, you know, they could be prickish, you know. Um, and, you know, when I've talked to some of them and uh, just kind of like delved into that game, you know, and kind of just ask questions and like, what's it like? You know, I know, uh, from a fan's perspective, you kind of just see it as, oh, well, they're just lying. He just lied. He just lied. I'm like, no. And I even made videos about this when I said like some of the big scooper, or the, the, the blogs out there, when uh, they say the Snyder Cut doesn't exist because they have a contact. They have a contact over at Warner Brothers. They have a contact over at Marvel. They have a contact somewhere, this, that, and this. 
they have contacts and when they're fed information, they'll just relay the information. And sometimes it ends up not happening. And, you know, and it sucks. That's why, that's another reason why I wouldn't want to get in the scooper game because you're fed information and then all of a sudden, like maybe the, the, the studio c- catches wind of it and goes, nope, 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 change, change it, change the plans, change the plans, don't do it. It's a really weird, it's a weird fucking game. It really is, you know, and that, when I when I talk to these guys and just like kind of just got, you know, a look at that world, I'm like, man, I don't want to be a part of that. I'd rather just talk shit into a microphone like I've been doing and just, you know, that's why I love it that you guys, my fans, followers, everybody, you just want to hear what I have to say about stuff. I'd rather be that. I'm not going to go out and be you know, trying to dig for scoops, you know, and this, that, be the first one to get shit out there. I mean, I thought I... I'd, I thought I wanted to be that, but no, I don't. I just want to fucking talk. Let's just talk. Let's talk about shit, you know? Let's talk about shit and not be so angry. I mean, of course, I do rant. I do, which is, I know you guys love it, and I love ranting too, and I will always rant. But when it comes to, like, discussing stuff with other people, you know, I'd rather have a civil discussion unless, you know, the other person starts going off. Then let's let's do it! No. But uh, anyways, I, yeah, that's the tangent I just went off on. But uh, okay, so last night, okay, so now where I currently live, um, I've told you guys, you know, it's it's uh, ghetto-ish, not like big time ghetto, but ghetto-ish. And so I'm thinking, okay, what movie I'm going to see tonight? There's three movies that are coming out this weekend that I would love to see. Lego Movie 2, Cold Pursuit, and The Prodigy. And I was going, okay... Obviously, when it comes to the bigger movie, that's, you know, and of course there'll be some people who say it's just all about the views. Well, you know, it is true. You know, I'm thinking about, uh, hey, what would what would my fans, what would my followers would like me to review? Probably the big movie that's coming out. And it's a sequel to a franchise. They probably want to see what my opinion is about that. And not to mention, it's like, I loved the first Lego movie. Loved Lego Batman even more. So I really did want to see... Lego Movie 2, so I'm going, okay, I should go see that movie, and then I, and, but then I went, okay, but nobody, I don't think any of my friends want to go see the movie, because I'll, I'll get hit up by my friends, and be like, hey, you're gonna go see this tonight, I'll join you, and it's always cool, and when that's the case, I always drive to the movie theater I used to frequent all the time, the Harkins, uh, over there, in, uh, I'm not even going to name the towns. You got a lot lot like you guys know. But I used to frequent that all the time, every Thursday. I mean, literally, when I walk up to the bar to order a drink, they know me. They're like, hey, man, what's up? What are you seeing tonight? And this, that, and this. Oh, yeah, how's your channel doing and stuff? It's really cool. I I really love it. But the fact that I moved uh, far farther away, I have a Harkins literally, like, down the street. There's a mall over here. Takes me two minutes to get there. The thing is, though, it's an old Harkins, okay? So no assigned seating. No recline seating and no beer. What the fuck? Ugh. And like I said, you know, kind of get over here. So I'm going, okay, if I'm going to go see Lego Movie tonight, you know, I'm going to go, oh, what? They're doing like earlier screenings because obviously it's a kid's movie. And I'm going, kids, ugh, I'm going to be there by myself. No assigned seating, no beer. Um, and, you know, I'm like going, ah, ugh, you know, ah. <sighs> I'm like thinking, God, I really don't want to do it. So maybe I'll see Cold Pursuit because, well, first off, ah, maybe I should support Liam Neeson because shit's not going bad. I'll talk about that in a bit. Shit's not going good with Liam Neeson. Not to mention, who doesn't want to see Liam Neeson kick some ass? And Cold Pursuit kind of looked like a funnier version of him kicking ass. I don't know. And then The Prodigy looked interesting because, you know, it's like a horror movie. And I'm like, ah, this looks interesting. Maybe it's going to be good. So I was like, ah, I was going back and forth, going, what should I see? What should I see? But uh, it was always like Lego Movie, Lego Movie. You gotta see Lego Movie. So I was gonna go see it, and then luckily one of my friends hit me up, and she was like, hey. And I went, hey. And I immediately just threw it upon her. I'm like, hey, you wanna go see Lego Movie? <laughs> and she went, all right. And I went, thank you. Sweet. So I ended up going to the Harkins that I usually frequent because, you know, She's closer to that. And I was like, yeah, any excuse to go to that. The only time I'll go to that is if somebody's going to join me that lives close to there, you know? And I was like, all right, cool. And it was a later showing, 7.30, as opposed to 
And uh, yeah, so we ended up having a good time. And then, you know, of course, I didn't get home till after 9.30. And I still had my shaft theater, uh, theater, <laughs> tra- trailer reaction to get out. And, you know, the fr- and I was like, all right, I know it's not happening tonight. It's fine. So uh, I apologize, guys, but I'm still, hey, I'm still, be happy that I'm still keeping with it. I'm still trying to get the podcast out every week, once a week, okay? Hopefully it'll just turn into something else. But uh, yeah, so that's what happened with all of that. Um, What else was I, (laughs) but um, yeah, what I really wanted to talk about in, uh, in this podcast, because a lot of you were asking me. And I was going to do a whole video about it, but I was like, you know what? I'll just save it for the pod. The Kevin Smith information about uh, Snyder's Justice League. Um, and I know this information came out like a week ago, probably over a week ago. And uh, I just didn't talk about it too much, you know, and I it, I suck. I know. I was waiting for it. And then uh, I listened to it. And uh, I mean, obviously, I mean, I love Kevin Smith. I've always been a fan of Kevin Smith. I mean, ever since I watched Mallrats on Stars, long time ago, back in like what ninety five, ninety six, it came on Stars, and I fucking loved that movie. Not his first movie; it's his second movie. Clerks, obviously, his first movie, and I just, I, I loved that movie. I mean, I, Brody, I was like, oh, that, that, that's me, that's me. I, I mean, as much as I love comic books, not as much as him. And then, of course, you know, he was more of the Marvel side. But I was just going like, man, that's like, yeah, I, I felt I just really connected with the Brody character. And, and, uh, and I was like, I even love going to the mall. Um, but I wasn't like a mall rat or anything like that. And I, and I thought his jacket was great, too. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and ever since then, I was just a, a fan. And, I, you know, you know what's funny? I remember seeing, I saw Dogma and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back before... I saw Clerks and Chasing Amy. Or did I say Chase? And you know what? I actually, I saw, I think I saw Clerks last. I don't remember the order I saw them in. It's funny too, because I just recently watched Clerks because it's on Netflix. I think I, uh, it was like a couple weeks ago. You know, it was just late at night. You know, it was already, I was like, yeah, hey, I was about to just veg out. And I just put Clerks on because, you know, I mean, it's, it, you could rip that movie apart. You know, with the bad acting, but I mean, he got his friends to fucking do it. I mean, you could rip the Evil Dead apart. <laughs> That's what, I love watching filmmakers that I respect and love. I love watching their first movies because they're usually, I mean, they're good, but they're shit if you really want to nitpick. And you know, you could say that about Christopher Nolan in his first movie, The Following. Was it called The Following or Following? I think <laughs> I saw it a long time ago. And, uh, you know, it's black and white as well. And, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, was that what it's called? I'm, like, totally drawing a blank. I'm like, yeah, right? Okay. Anyways, um, so, um, where was I going with it? Oh, yeah, Kevin Smith. He's talking about this. And, uh, yeah, I love Kevin Smith. And uh, this is pretty much the breakdown of what he had to say. And I was, like, you know, I was talking with my source and everything like that. And uh, he uh, he was saying that he saw Jim Lee break down boards of all three Justice League movies. Okay, now, <laughs> yeah, Jim Lee. You guys wonder why when I posted that video about they should uh, take Snyder's five part Superman story arc and put it in graphic novel form, and Jim Lee should be the uh, the guy who illustrates it. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> That's why. If you were wondering why I said specifically Jim Lee, it's because, well, I think Jim Lee, <laughs> yeah. Ba 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 ba, yeah. Hmm, interesting, right? <clears throat> Might have saw a couple things or two. Anyways, um, so then, of course, uh, he talks about how uh, at the end of the first Justice League, how he, he says, uh, saw Darkseid and Darkseid saw them. Boom tube closes and that's the end of the fucking movie with them all uh, with them with them all knowing there's uh, something out there and we have to go. Um, remember that shot, that behind the scenes shot of uh, the entire league, like on that bridge? It looks like a bridge, you know, and there's green screen behind them and they're all looking at something. Guess what they're looking at right there? Yes, exactly what Smith said. 
Dark side through boom tube. Mm-hmm. Steppenwolf defeated. Yeah, of course, the way he was defeated. In the theatrical cut, not what happens. I think you guys kind of already know how it actually happens, how he's actually defeated. Especially when you see that slow motion, very Snyder slow motion of her leaping into the air with her sword and just, ah! I think you can guess what was supposed to happen. Yes, you do. You guys are going, yeah! Yeah. And then he says Justice League 2 was going to be cosmic as they take the fight to Apocalypse and Lantern, uh, of course, uh, was involved. Okay. Now, when I reached out to my source, he wasn't too sure if it actually went to Apocalypse, but um, this totally makes sense. And like I said, you know, I'm not claiming my source knew every fucking thing about it, okay? You know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, yes, this, that, and this, and I have this, yeah, and every, I know everything about it. No, I don't. But uh, this does make sense. This does absolutely make sense. And then he also says that Just League 2 would have ended poorly like Empire Strikes Back or Infinity War. Yes, it would have ended up with Batman dying. <laughs> it would have ended up with Batman dying or sacrificing himself. The thing about this, though, guys, it might not have been... Okay, so remember how we, we already know, especially looking at the Snyder shirt, we know that Batman sacrificed himself. He was going to sacrifice himself. Now, what I was told, and this is the thing, and, it, and it's, it's gone, and this is what I was told by my source, it's gone back, it, was, it, it went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Justice League, this whole Justice League story was, it went from being one big movie to divided into two parts to divided into three parts. Okay? Because, you know, just because of time. That's simply what it is. This just Justice League story probably could have fit in probably two, three-hour parts. Three hour, 15, whatever. But you know studios, especially Warner Brothers. <laughs> hey, Sujihara, <laughs> what do you think about Endgame being three hours? Fuck you. Anyways, so what I was told was they had the story all planned out. They had everything planned out, planned out but of course it got rearranged. It went from one big, long Justice League movie to two Justice League movies to eventually, like, maybe we got to break it up into three. So, Batman dying at the end of Justice League 2 could have just been Batman dying at the end of the entire story. But I think they initially were like, hey, you know, especially, you know, how Ben Affleck was, uh, he was only signed on for three movies. I think at that time they were like, Justice League is going to be two divided into two parts. And they're probably going to be, well, like three hours plus both parts. Okay? Because I'm willing to bet, <laughs> I'm willing to bet that Smith, when he was talking about the storyboards by Jim Lee, yeah, he saw, he saw Batman back in that nightmare costume, the trench coat and everything. Because eventually it was going to get there. It was going to get there. We were going to get that injustice story. What we saw in the nightmare, and what we were going to see again in the cyborg's nightmare or whatever the fuck, yes, we were going to get that. It was going to end badly and things were going to go bad. And uh, I don't know. But things, time travel, who knows? I don't know the logistics of everything. I don't. But we know that Batman was going to sacrifice himself, Lois and and Clark were going to have a baby, and they're going to name it Bruce, and it was eventually going to get to that nightmare scenario. It was all leading to there. That's what, you know, that's what BVS was setting up. Oh God, it just it, it is frustrating, guys. Very frustrating because you just you want to see that. It would have been something unique and different. It really would have. It fucking sucks. Fucking sucks. So, um. Yeah, when it comes to uh, them taking the fight to Apocalypse, I'm sure we would have saw Apocalypse. I'm sure there would have been some of that stuff there. But, I mean, uh, yeah. But, yeah, like I said, you got to remember, like, I mean, they weren't thinking they weren't thinking run times when they came up with the story and they wrote it all out and stuff like that. So it kind of fluctuated between one big long movie to two movies to three movies kind of thing. It's 
to no movies. My God. And that suck? I mean, come on. Put it into graphic novel form. And like I said, you already got Jim Lee doing some shit. So uh, there you go. Uh, it was going to be the entire third movie here. Yeah, he said, entire third movie, last stand against Dark Side and the forces of apocalypse. Holy fuck. Yeah. And it would have been Batman dying, pretty much. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I don't know. And like I said, I don't know the logistics of all that. But obviously, if you looked at Snyder's shirt, the ending, the ending part of the story was the birth of a Kryptonian slash human that was going to be named Bruce Kent. So when we talk about the end of Justice League 2, Batman dying, it was actually just the end of this story. I don't know. It's all crazy. It's all nutties. And it makes me sad. <laughs> we don't get to see it. <sighs> it's nutties. It's nutties. Yeah. God. So there you go. That's my two cents on it. That's pretty much my two cents. And uh, um, yeah. So, I mean, I'm totally thinking that, yeah, Kevin Smith... I mean, look at that. Kevin Smith, a lot of people were shitting on him because he didn't really give a good review of, uh, of BBS right at first. You know, but I'm telling you, you, <laughs> I'm telling you, if they were to release this arc, this story in graphic novel form, there'd be so many people that shit on BBS and shit on Man of Steel that would be coming around and going, you know what? Jesus Christ. This would have been fantastic. This would have been epic. This would have been his opus. This would have been Snyder's opus. We went from the Snyder cut to the Snyder opus. <laughs> My God. It just, it, it yeah. No, oh, man. Is there any way to uh, switch dimensions to the dimension that there is this? Sadly, no. Anyways, moving along. Liam Neeson. <laughs> I have a specific set of skills. I will find you. Well, yeah. Liam, you shouldn't have said that you were trying to find a black man. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, this whole thing. And I uh, tweeted out a couple things. And, ooh, I got some pushback. And, ooh, did I lose followers and stuff like that about uh, all this. Hey, you know, I'm going to put my two cents in, man. I mean, I tell you what, when it comes to stuff, when it comes to nowadays, you mention anything, any, anything that was going on way back when or way back, whatever the fuck, a different time, different mindset. And uh, even if you learned a valuable lesson or you were like, you know what, that was totally wrong and I've changed this side and that doesn't matter. People just want your life taken from you. They literally want your life taken from you from you and that's my biggest gripe i kept when the people that pushed back against my tweets about when i said like this is something he told a story about 40 years ago how uh i think a family member i thought it was a friend but i think it's a fam. it was a family member actually said she was raped and it was a black gentleman so he just got filled with rage and he said like i want to find this black bastard coming out of a pub or something like that and if any black guy just like you know bumped me and did anything wrong i was gonna fucking kill him he wanted to talk about that he openly talked about it i'm sure he's regretting the shit out of it now it's like dude hey liam you know in this climate you might not want to mention stuff like that being a white guy i mean you're just gonna be chastised and uh yeah so now everybody i mean there are people just going what the fuck um i was my when I tweeted out and stuff like that, I literally was like, you realize there's people that want him digitally removed from Men in Black International. They want him removed digitally. <laughs> they would love it if they did a Kevin Spacey and reshot all the scenes in Men in Black with Christopher Plummer or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> That's the shit that I'm talking about. Liam Neeson did nothing wrong. He wanted to openly talk about a bad time in his life 40 years ago. A bad decision that he made and that he even copped to. And I kept getting, the, the pushback was he didn't apologize to black people. Because that's just the way it is. Everybody wants a goddamn apology these days. 
I'm like, really? Is that going to make you feel better? Because I doubt it. You're just going to go after the next person that that in ra- out, that that causes outrage in this fucking outrage culture that we've started that we we made that we turned this fucking society into. These people want an apology like it's a fucking badge of honor. He talked about how he felt bad and he learned a valuable lesson from, you know, the way humans think and revenge and this, that, and this. I literally had somebody say, do you think you would have reacted the same way if it was a white guy? Are you fucking kidding me? You must not really think highly of Liam Neeson. The guy has not done anything wrong in his whole career, but now all of a sudden you think you think he's just a racist and he wouldn't have? He, if a family member got raped, she got raped and she said it was a white guy with red hair and freckles and everything, that he would just went, oh, well, well, if that's the case, a white guy, well, you're probably, what, were you wearing a short skirt? You were asking for it, of course. <laughs> I'm going to go drink with that guy. Fuck you. Fuck you. He would have still had red in his eyes. God, it's so ridiculous. It's just the way that everything's turning out to be. You know, suppose, supposedly, like, hey, say I have a neighbor or something like that. A neighbor, um, say I have two neighbors, a white neighbor and a black neighbor, okay? And um, that neighbor, the white guy, was a total prick, a total dick, you know? And he was a dick to me and a, neighbor, a dick to the black guy, too. Well, I would just be like, wow, that guy's a douchebag. Look at that. He's a fucking asshole. But the black guy, he could, he would just, you know, obviously if he was being a dick to him, he, he himself and other people would be like, well, obviously he's a racist. I mean, you see how that works? And it's the, the same thing here. I mean, I, I don't, I, I can't say that because, well, I'm half white, but obviously I look, I don't, when people see me, they just assume that I'm white. You know, you know, I would have to be like, hey, uh, my last name's Peña, Mira, Mira Wacha. Um, but that's, that's just the way things are now, you know? So the fact that it was a black guy and he said that, yeah, I mean, totally he shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yes. But the fact that somebody literally said, do you think he would have actually done the same thing if it was a white guy? Yes, he absolutely would have. My God. <laughs> I mean, oh, it was a white guy? Well, whatever. Then I'm, uh, who cares? I'm sure you enjoyed it. Yeah, that's, a, no. Come on. Really? Fucking A, man. Yeah, it's just, it's crazy. And then, then I had, I literally had somebody like, dude, the way you're tweeting about Liam Neeson's making it seem like you've said some shit in the past. And I went, Whoa, yeah, you caught me, buddy. Yeah. Oh, you don't even know. I've said some racist-ass shit in the past. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, my parents brought me up badly. Yeah, my parents of two different fucking races. Of races. Not racist. Races. Totally treat me. Totally talk bad about. Yeah, yeah, they fucking raised me wrong. (laughs) Jesus Christ. And being an army brat? You don't even know, man. Being an army brat and going to school... I mean, there's, that's what mixes up a bunch of, you know, it's so diverse when it comes to being like a military brat. Yeah, you're, it's so diverse because there's, you know, it's everybody. So you're going, I mean, I, I was born in fucking Alabama and then we went back to Alabama. You don't even know, like when the school I went to on post is full of, there's Asian, Mexican. I, I had such a diverse fucking set of friends growing up. <laughs> oh my God. Because that's the way it is in the military. And anybody who was a mil- is a military child can totally just be like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. doesn't matter where you are in the country because they don't care what the fuck you look like. You're being stationed over here. And, and this is Alabama. Oh, you don't even know. If you could see my class pictures, holy shit, it's diverse as fuck. As fuck. My, my street, man, remember my street in Alabama, just totally, just, just a mix of just everyone, and everybody was great, everybody got along, nobody gave a shit, we all got along, we all had fun, it was all fucking 
fucking copacetic. It was great. <laughs> yeah, but of course everybody thinks like everything's so bad now. It's fucking ridiculous. I don't even know how can I. And now they had to cancel the Cold Pursuit uh, red carpet premiere because of everything. It, it's fucking ridiculous. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Liam Neeson is not a racist. Somebody was literally, you know, the people that were pushing me back, and I and I just had a joke. I'm like, yeah, I'm waiting for the uh, the hot mics behind the scenes of Widows when he when he talks about uh, kissing Viola Davis and calling it icky. <laughs> like, do you fucking really think <laughs> it's just so fucking ridiculous? Oh, you get. I mean, these people are totally ruining. They're totally just putting. If everybody's a racist, then you know, then actual racists are having a good time right now, because they're getting lumped in with Liam Neeson, who starred in a movie where he played the husband of a black woman, <laughs> and they're just like, "Yep, yeah, hey, what are you talking about? I'm not a racist, uh, obviously." I mean, the word is having no meaning now. That's what sucks about it, about everybody being called a racist now, or even a sexist homophobic it's it's all just yeah you're totally demeaning the word the word the words are meaning nothing now because actual people that are like that they're now hiding in plain sight good job people good job because when you were called a racist you know fucking eight years ago you went whoa 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 whoa. now it's just like oh yeah fuck off now you just respond with fuck off i'm not you're fucking retarded you're just one of those that's what it is. It sucks. <laughs> I mean, I've literally... I mean, there was one time... I mean, there's been a couple of times where I've been called out because people think I'm white. And then I'm like, uh, do you not see my last name? I mean, there's literally a squiggle over the N. <laughs> Come on. And then all of a sudden they go, uh, 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 uh. I mean, there was like a... There was like a podcast or a radio show I remember hearing about where this lady called out this dude who called in for his white privilege and it ended up being a black dude. <laughs> uh, it's You know what? As much as like I hate how all this is happening, but when shit like that happens, which it happens a lot, it just makes you laugh because it just shows you how ignorant these fucking people are. And it's just so weird. It's like you are fuck. You're an adult. You're a free-thinking adult. How are you thinking like this now? You know? People make it seem like the KKK is, like, parading around all the streets everywhere. And the fucking skinny, fucking, the the, the, the pale, frail, balding, you know, fucking midsection sticking out dudes are walking around with tiki torches. Remember when that happened? And the media blew it up like it was just like half the country was doing this. The white supremacy shit. I'm like, No! Point zero 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 one percent and everybody is going look at these fucking assholes and weirdos nobody fucking want yeah it's yeah it's crazy man i don't know it just it needs to it needs to turn back around to just to where we you know certain things are being adjusted cool fine whatever you know but it's never but the thing is when when uh, these people run out of you know yelling and being outraged, they'll have nothing. That's the thing; they will have nothing. So that's why they're trying to find uh, racism in Mary Poppins, saying that the chimney sweeper people and the fact that Mary Poppins had you know smoked shit, you know the shit on her face. They were like, oh, it's blackface! It's blackface! That's the big thing right now. People calling everybody blackface. But what's funny is it kind of started with the uh, the Democratic senator or whoever the fuck politician dude. He, uh, in his yearbook, he did blackface. Uh, standing, you know, it was like a costume thing. Blackface and then a KKK. Somebody dressed up as a KKK guy. And it's funny because he called out um, the, the person that he was going up against, the Republican, for being racist. And now he... <laughs> this is what happens. This is what fucking happens. It's just what happens. It comes around. You start screaming racism at people. All of a sudden, it's going to come back around to you. They're trying to get Joy Behar, who's like, said that she fucking did that, like a kind of blackface thing. She's always been, it's so fucking crazy. Relax. Fucking relax. It's okay. 
long as you can, as everybody, whatever your background is, whatever your color skin it is, whatever's in your pants, long as you can go outside, go to the mall, go to the fucking Burger King right around the corner, and purchase something, and be greeted, and pay your money, and walk away unscathed, and everybody's treated fairly and nicely, there's, sh- there's not a problem. There's no problems. God, we've never had it so good. But people make it seem like it's back in the goddamn 40s and 50s. It's not. There's not separate drinking fountains. There's not separate bathrooms. There's not whites-only stores. It's a free-for-all. You can't live in this country if you're, like, afraid of people that don't look like you. You can't live in this country. You wouldn't be able to fucking manage. Because everywhere you go, you go out in public, you're going to see diverse amounts of people. I mean, I guess depending on where you're at. <laughs> but mo- mostly, every time I go to the mall, every time I go out somewhere, I mean, it's there's, it's a free-for-all. It's fantastic. It's great. I consider it a utopia. <laughs> I know we got still issues and problems, but that, that just shows you that, you know, these people have nothing else to care about. Nothing else to worry about. All right, let's get to the questions because... I'm going to be talking more later. I'm losing my voice because I'm also going to be shooting some videos too, man. Tell you what. I tell you what. Ah, all right. Where's, 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 where? There we go. There's the hashtag. If you want to, uh, if you want to, uh, like I said, if you want to ask me a question, just uh, hashtag film junket podcast and it'll work out for you. Here we go. Uh, Michael Minette. Hey Dave, been wondering what are your thoughts on Captain Marvel's marketing? I ask because while I'm looking forward to it, the marketing doesn't seem like it's doing the movie any favors. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not really, I mean, I'll, I'm still going to see it, but I just don't see it. I, it's not pulling me in. Yeah, I'm going to do a, a video about, you know, Brie Larson and her activism and this, that, and this. And that. You know, trying to, they're going to, they're going to, once it gets closer, it's going to get worse when it comes to shit like that. And I'm just like, I'm not looking forward to it. It's going to get bad, you know, with the whole first female Marvel thing. And it's just going to get bad. It's going to get worse. It's going to get dumb. Why is there this Walt Disney World thing about this duck right here that's making me sad? Because now all of a sudden he sees Donald Duck and he's really happy. And now I'm about to cry. And he's hugging his fucking ankle. My God, why is there ads in the hashtag? Um, Steve-O, what's your favorite local movie theater that you frequently visit? My favorite is AMC. Their uh, Stubbs A-minus list movie pass is definitely worth it. Uh, like I said, I go to Harkins because, you know, and I, and, yeah, I can understand that because, you know, you got the, you know, there was the movie passes and this, that, and this, but I'm all about convenience. You know, I'll pay the extra for the beer and the reclined seats, <laughs> you know. So I'm, I'm all about the Harkins, the new Harkins. Um, what's your favorite graphic novel? Mr. Alex Petrop, Petrop asks. And Hush is up there. Um, Long Halloween up there. Man, that's a difficult one. You know, because then I could say stuff like the first mask graphic novel where, you know. I mean, obviously, when a lot of these graphic novels, when they... Uh, they were just like one big long story. I mean, they released the individual issues, but then of course they have one big graphic novel. And I mean, yeah, that's a difficult one, man. <laughs> difficult. He also asked, "What's your favorite space sci-fi horror movie?" Space sci-fi horror movie. Event Horizon is up there, um, but of course, you know, just the original Alien. Aliens too is up there. Jesus, you know. Can't go wrong with either one of those. Uh, Matt, Diablo Mutant. Thoughts on the Black Widow film? Well, they're talking about rumored that it's going to be rated R, which I said yes. I mean, that's why when everybody was always saying like, oh yeah, Marvel's finally getting into their uh, Black Widow movie. Yeah, finally, yeah. Yeah, because of Wonder Woman. I'm like, Wonder Woman and Black Widow are not even in the same goddamn category. Shut the fuck up, please. Wonder Woman is full of hope. And she's got, she's a goddess, you know, she has powers, you know. 
Black Widow is an assassin. She's not supposed to be looked at as a big time role model, you fucks. She kills people. And it should be rated R. My God. So if they do that, that'd be ballsy. And I, if they do officially announce it being rated R, and then of course people are like, oh, they're just doing that because of Birds of Prey. Shut up. Stop it. Be okay with that. It's fine. My God. Uh, uh, Athraj Vibhishan. Sorry. I, you know, I butcher names. I apologize. Uh, film journal, any thoughts on the State of the Union and the awkward behavior of uh, uh, AOC? Uh, what is it? Uh, Cortez, Miss Cortez. Um, I tweeted out something that she did, you know, in front of Congress or whatever, calling out how politicians can be paid off easily. I thought that was really done well. High five on her behalf. Everything else, though, <laughs> that woman, uh, I'm sorry. I can't get, I can't support a lot of the shit she says. Um, she's been called out for just her facts. She, you know, when she claims that she has, you know, she's stating facts, they're not. Um, yeah. And then she's even said like, you know, there's a difference between being factually right and morally right. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Wow. Um, I don't think she's that bright when it comes to stuff like that. She doesn't really know how things work. I mean, there's that whole AOC paradox where she wants to tech tax the billionaires 70%. But at the same time, she has, she goes, an economy with billionaires is immoral. I'm like, yeah, but you need those people to pay for the shit that you want to be paid for, right? So you kind of need those people. It's just, you know, that's the whole paradox. It's kind of funny. Uh, and the way she acted there, yeah, it was fucking strange because she tried to high five somebody and they weren't looking and she totally looked very awkward. Uh, when it came, comes to certain things that those people, the, the Democratic women in white, they were not okay with. They didn't clap for certain people who were the unemployment's down. They just hate Donald Trump. That's just what it is. It's like you can't say, you can't do that. I mean, of course they cheered when it was about them and how, like, what, 58% women in Congress? Yeah, they cheered about that. But everything else, they were like, no. Yeah, it was very, very strange. Ah, uh, Parza. He asks, what's the current state of Flashpoint? Uh, I don't think it's going to be a thing now. Which I was, I wouldn't, I didn't want it to be a thing. I wanted it to be a, a Justice League movie. So, I don't know. So, it sounds like it's not a thing. Uh, Gary Mall asks, hey Dave, would love to see you make a top 10 list of your most anticipated DC films in their slate or in development. Not really a question. <laughs> yeah, I can get to around that eventually. Um, uh, Julian Luis Barrios. Barrios. Any thoughts on what the official title for Star Wars Episode Nine is going to be? I think it's going to have... Are they going to have something? I, there's a rumor that said Balance to the Force. That's a good title. It's not bad. Um, do you think it's going to have force in it again? I don't know. Uh, I don't really know. I, I can't really, I don't really, I'd ever really thought about it. I'm just kind of anxiously waiting for it though. Uh, Majin Gaku Black. Hey Dave, have you seen this hilarious John Campia video that's been going around where he said Aquaman wouldn't make a billion? If not, here's a link. Yeah, I saw it. And I know a lot of people were like, this guy, you know, I'm like, yeah, he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Um, and he was dumb for thinking that, you know, the Disney brand was just going to fucking wipe it out. But I can't say that we all weren't nervous. I was, and I even said it. I mean, it was going up against a Transformer movie and a Disney movie. And I was a little nervous. I didn't, I never said, you know, I was like, eh, maybe it will make a billion. Who knows? But yeah, yeah, his face was, uh, had egg on it for sure. Um, the King, Sean J.T. King asks, what do you think would have been a good out for, uh, Batfleck as Batman? Well, the way that it was supposed to be, sacrifice. I feel like they should have established Dick Grayson in the universe. They would have, and have been, uh, take over as Batman. Yeah, that would have been interesting. With Damien as his Robin. Uh, that way they have a younger Batman. Yeah, that's a good idea. But yeah, I, I would have loved to see the sacrifice that was supposed to happen. Jose M., Need your answer to this timeless question. Man of Steel or Batman or Superman and why? Uh, BVS, of course. Just because it has Batman in it, dude. And it was just, I, I don't know. 
I just love that movie. I mean, I love both of them. But BVS, man, because it just it, there's just much more going on. It's more challenging than Superman. You see a Batman who's lost his way. It's just, yeah, there's just so much goodness in that damn movie. Uh, Eric M. Blake, what are your top five movies? Or, if you don't have a set list, the first five favorite movies that come to mind off the top of your head, trilogies can count as one entry. I, mean, I could say Back to the Future. <laughs> Yeah, I've always said Fight Club. You know, I've always loved Fight Club, Memento. You know, it's just classic movies like The Thing, Evil Dead. You know, just those that ring, that just ring in my heart that I love. You know, just just movies like that. Just off the top of my head. Uh, Jose M. So this uh, Liam Neeson and Outrage. Have people even heard the whole thing? Is context even a thing now? Nope. Another victim of outrage mob? Give us your thoughts. Well, I already talked about it. Yeah, you're right. Context isn't a thing because there are so many headlines that were saying, like, Liam Neeson's racist comments, you know? And it's just like, oh, you read it. Oh, okay. That's what he meant. My God. Uh, Steve O, last one. Have you checked out the new Netflix movie called Polar starring Mads Mikkelsen and Vanessa Hudgens? It's a pretty badass action flick, almost as good as. Oh yeah, I still gotta watch both of those, dude. I know you, uh, people have mentioned uh, the night comes for us. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen is a beast. Uh, you can't go wrong with him, and Vanessa Hudgens is gorgeous. I've always, oh, always had a little thing for her, man. Uh, spring Break, that Spring Break movie, or whatever the fuck that was. What was it called? Was it called Spring Break? The one with uh, uh, I can't. I'm totally drawing a blank. You know what I'm talking about? God, my God. And it's like, yeah, she ain't no fucking High School Musical anymore. So, anyways, guys, there you go. That is the podcast. Appreciate you guys listening in. And uh, after I post this, yeah, look for the vodka stream later. I'll be doing that and everything else. So, I appreciate it, guys. You're awesome. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.